This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, you'll see uh, the last bit in this chapter uh, refers to something uh, that's actually completely separate to IFRS 15, uh, which it is separate, so uh, perhaps really I should have uh, put it in a separate chapter, but never mind, it's fairly short. But um, it's to do with the recording of revenue. When do we record sales? When do we record revenue? Uh, and it's new, it replaces an earlier accounting standard. Uh, but uh, revenue recognition. Uh, and it may seem fairly obvious when we record sales. You know, normally it is. If I'm selling calculators, if I sell you a calculator today, I record the sale today. Uh, debit um, receivables or cash credit sales, I record it the day I sell it. But there are two specific things that affect you that are covered by this um, uh, standard. The first being um, what we call um, uh, long-term contracts. An example of what I mean, an example that I'll use with some numbers with you, is mobile phone contracts. That uh, I think it's the case in probably all countries, that you can take a contract with the mobile phone company, um, that perhaps you'll sign a contract for three years and you'll pay them a fixed amount each month over three years. And so because it's uh, lasting for more than a year, the question is, when do you actually record the revenue? Uh, again, it may seem obvious, record it as you get it, but it's not quite as it seems under the new rules. Um, there are five steps. You'll see steps listed. Now, I'm not going to talk through the steps one by one now. I'll explain what they mean with the example. So look at the example and see where the problem is and how we deal with it. Have a look with me. Roger enters into a 12-month contract with Vita, his local mobile operator. And the terms of the contract is that he'll pay a monthly fixed fee of $50. And he'll get a free handset at the start of the contract and then, of course, gets the service. Now, that's quite common. That people pay a fixed $50 a month, whether it's for a year or for three years, whatever the contract is. But in return, not only will they get the actual mobile service, but they'll get given a phone. Now, of course, you don't have to go into that sort of contract. You could buy the phone yourself right at the beginning and then just have a contract for the actual service. And you pay a lot less. And it says here, Theta Cell does sell the same handset for $200. And the same monthly plan. Well, if you've already bought the handset yourself to get the service without uh, them giving you a handset, uh, they only charge $30 a month. Now, I think you probably recognise what I mean. I think that's fairly standard in all countries that you've got the choice. Some people prefer to buy the handset themselves and then pay a lower monthly fee for the service. Other people, well, rather than have to pay out all that money right at the beginning, they'd rather pay a bit more each month. Uh, effectively spread the cost. Well, for the contract they offer with a free handset, the question is, how do we spread the revenue? Uh, because we know how much they'll receive in total. There's a monthly fixed fee of $50. So in total, they are going to receive 600. There is 600 revenue. But if this spreads over more than a year, I know it's only a 12-month contract, but, you know, people may start it halfway through a year or something. Well, how much of that 600 will be recorded each year? Well, what the new rules say is rather than just record revenue of 50 a month, we should record revenue 
when we've fulfilled an obligation to the customer. And what I mean there is the obligations to the customer, if they opt for this $50 a month, first of all, we've got to provide a handset immediately. So that's one obligation. And then, of course, we've got to provide the service each month. And the uh, rules say that this 600 we're receiving, we should allocate it between them. Part of that revenue is for the handset and should be recorded immediately. Part of the revenue is for the service and that should be spread over the 12 months, the three, the three years, whatever it is. And to see how we spread it, we say, well, how much would they have to pay if they did buy the two separately? What you might call the standalone price. If they did buy the two separately, the handset, well, Vita sells the same handsets for 200. Uh, and the service, well, if they bought the two separate, they'd be paying 30 a month, in total 360. And they'd be paying a total of 560. And so if they hadn't done that, obviously when you take the hands, uh, give them the handset, immediately there'd be 200 revenue. Uh, and then uh, for the service, well, you've got revenue, you'd record 30 each month. Now, of course, that's not what ha what's happening. What they're actually doing, if they go for the full contract, is they're ending up paying a total of 600. And it's not our problem, but I'm not surprised they're paying more because they're not having to pay up front for the phones. It's like paying a bit of interest. Uh, however, the question is, some of that 600 should be allocated to the handset as though they have sold it and take the revenue immediately. The rest of it is for the service and will be spread a bit each month. How are we going to spread it? Well, the same percentages of the total. We say if they bought it standalone, uh, the handset will be 200 out of a total of 560. which would be 35.7% of the total, 200 out of 560. Uh, the service, in total, would be paying 360. What percentage is that of the total? Oh dear. 360 divided by a total of 560. 64.3%. Um, So if they have been doing standalone, they'd be paid 560, and there is how it um, would be apportioned. Well, similarly, given they're actually getting revenue of 600, we should apportion it between these two obligations, give them a handset now, give them a service each month, using the same percentages. So uh, for the handset, 35.7% of 600 is 214. For the service, 64.3% of 600 is 386. And so what's the relevance of this? Remember, 600 is the actual revenue they're getting. But instead of just recording it, revenue 50 each month, they should record 214 immediately in the month the handsets provided. The other 386, well, how much per month does that come to? 32.17 per month. So ultimately, in any one year, 
if they start a, if a customer starts a contract today, 214 will be recorded this year, will be recorded immediately. Uh, as far as a service, it will be $32 a month will be recording. So if they started the contract, there's only two months left this year, only 64 will be recorded this year for the service. The rest of it for the service will be recorded next year. So again, it's just how it's spread. The total revenue obviously is 600. But whereas they used to simply record 50 each month, now that there's more than one obligation, they've got to give a handset and then they've got to give the service. Uh, well, it needs allocating the way I've done it there. All right, uh, that was one thing. The other thing that um, could affect you in the exam for IFRS 15 is uh, discounts for early payment. Uh, I mentioned these in an early chapter, earlier chapter. Uh, so nothing to do with mobile phones here, but it's where you sell goods on credit and you offer a discount to customers uh, if they're prepared to pay early. Look at example two, where I explain to you how we deal with it uh, for discounts allowed, discounts we're giving to customers for paying quick. Rena sells goods with a list price of 5000 on credit to a customer. And what normally would you do, forgetting what's coming, normally if you sell goods on credit, obviously debit, receivables, credit, sales, 5000 We've offered the customer a 2% discount if they pay us within 10 days. So if they do pay us quickly, they won't pay us 5,000, they'll pay us 5,000 less, 2%. Uh, if they take longer than 10 days, then they'll have to pay us the full 5,000. Well, what we've got to do is say to ourselves, do we think the customer will take this discount? Normally you wouldn't offer the discount if you didn't think they're likely to accept it, and it does say, Based on past experience, we expect the customer will take the discount. Well, in that case, it's silly to record ourselves as having sold for 5,000 when they know, we know they're not going to pay us 5,000. So we say, how much do, they think, do we think we're going to get? We're going to invoice 5,000, but we think they'll take a discount. 2% of 5,000 is what? 100? And so, that's what we're really expecting they'll pay us. And so since we only expect to pay 4,900, 4, that's really all we expect to sell, all we expect to get. And so we'll debit receivables with 4,900 and credit sales. And, of course, assuming the customer does pay within 10 days, as we expect, they'll pay us 4,900 and therefore debit cash credit receivables for nine, and we finished. The sale was effectively for 4,900. 4,900 is what will appear in the statement of profit or loss. Now that's fine. Except, although we thought they'd take the discount, it could be, of course, that we were wrong. Uh, and that they didn't pay quick. And if they took longer than 10 days, they have to pay us the full 5,000. And so what are we going to do then? So this is part B. If the customer doesn't pay quickly, they'll pay us 5,000 debit cash credit 5,000 we only had them as owing uh, 4.9 why have they paid us an extra 5,000 an extra 100 
because of course they didn't take the discount. Debit uh, receivables credit sales with that discount. So there, they did end up having to pay us 5,000, therefore the sales end up being 5,000. But the important thing is, which is different than what we used to do, we start off by recording what we think they'll pay, 4,900. If they do pay early and pay 4,900, that's the end of it. If it does turn out they have to pay more because they don't pay on time, then we record the extra hundred. And the actual sales end up being 5,000. So, there we are.